is the new Disney Pixar film from director Lee Unkirk, who has directed Toy Story 3 in the past. This movie is about a young boy named Miguel, who lives in this family who love to make shoes. The Rivera family loves to make shoes they have for generations, and they want Miguel to grow up loving making shoes as well, but Miguel doesn't find that very interesting. His main interest is in music, but the family sees music as kind of this curse, and they can't really, can't really get involved in that in any way. But once Miguel starts to suspect that his musical idol, Ernesto de la Cruz, played by Benjamin Bratt, is his great-great-grandfather. He goes to Ernesto's grave to get his famous guitar, but once he gets it, he's transported to the land of the dead. He's seeing skeletons everywhere, and no one else can see him anymore, and now he has to find a way to get back home while also figuring out his family roots. That's all I really have to say about this movie, because you really do have to go into this thing with a fresh kind of mind, not knowing a whole lot about it, because the trailers actually did a good job kind of not showing a whole lot. Unfortunately, though, I went into this movie with a little bit of minimal expectations, because even though I was hearing great things about it, everyone was loving this movie, there was a part of my brain that just couldn't really let go of the fact that a movie very similar came out three years ago called The Book of Life. And that movie, I don't love that movie or anything. I thought it was a decent movie, though a movie that I enjoy, I could watch again, and when I see this, I was just thinking, uh, it looks like Pixar's just taking, like, a smaller film and just, like, ripping it off into their own new movie, like, how, like, really, guys? And it's bad enough that I went into the movie with those kind of expectations, but they also forced us to watch an Olaf Frozen holiday special that's apparently gonna be on TV, like, this month, but they decided to show it with Coco first. I was just like, why is this thing so long? Like, why did you do this to me, Disney? I don't want to watch this. A five minute short I'm fine with, not this 20 minute bull crap that's forgettable. So I was already in a bad mood when that movie started, but I'm glad that I was able to make it through that short, the 20 minute short, because this movie is really something else. The expectations I had before of it just ripping off the Book of Life. Do the Book of Life and Coco share similarities plot-wise? Only a few things considering just the world that they go to. Um, for the most part though, Coco is its own beautiful unique thing. I loved this movie. Going, going into the movie, I was thinking, oh, this is just going to be a ripoff. I walked out loving this movie. In fact, I've been thinking for the past few days on where it kind of lands as far as like ranking Pixar films, and I still don't really know, but I think it might just be in, in the top three. This movie, it, it hit me, man. This movie... Just like out of nowhere, a movie I didn't expect to to do anything for me that much just smacked me in the face and just like kind of shook me into realization like, holy crap, this movie is amazing. And of course, anyone can talk about how beautiful the movie looks because of the animation, which is very true. The world that they're in, the land of the dead, it is gorgeous to see. It honestly does look like real life. And I know Pixar animation has been getting better and better, but at this point it's just so profound to me that when I see a frame of this movie, sometimes I'm thinking like, was that that, lo that looks very close to real life. Like, this could almost pass as a live-action setting. And it's just a really great testament to how amazing the Pixar animators are becoming, how great they've been for so long, but how great they're also continuing to grow. And even when they're not in the Land of the Dead, the surroundings they're in, some of the colors that they have here and there, it all looks really great. It's a visually investing movie, but a lot of my love for this movie doesn't go with just the visuals. A lot of it goes in with its story. This is one of my favorite screenplays of the year. In fact, it might be my favorite screenplay of the entire year. We have this main character, Miguel, who is a young boy who's, who has big dreams. He wants to become this musician, this famous musician. It's a, someone following their dreams. At first, you might just think, all right, well, this is going to go like kind of how I expect it. The movie eventually turns from like follow your dreams and it turns into something much bigger, something more important involving family, the family roots that you may have. This movie really does turn into something much bigger than just, oh, follow your heart. It turns into something that actually feels very important, something that's actually going to be changing Miguel as he goes along in this plot. This is one of the best Pixar characters out there right now. Miguel is so good here. And also Hector, who is a side character, he is one of the best side characters that we've ever had, honestly, because it starts off with you thinking like, okay, he's just, he's a comedic skeleton, like he's falling apart and he's coming back together, like, haha, uh -huh, that's pretty funny. But as certain stuff starts to get revealed, you kind of look back on some of the funnier moments with him and you just kind of think like, uh, 
I kind of want to laugh at that because it is funny, but knowing the kind of context it's in now, it's not that funny anymore. And that to me is just so great. When you have a movie that is really funny, but when they have to switch into a little more, you know, emotional, a little more deep, it doesn't feel disjointed, it doesn't feel off, it just has this perfect flow of a transition and you're just kind of like, Ah, oh, like uh, my heart actually kind of sank at some moments in this movie, especially the last 10 minutes. It, it, all, the movie just builds up to this last 10 minutes. There's a few moments throughout the movie where you can be like, oh, that's sweet. Last 10 minutes, though, will wreck you. Be I know because it wrecked me. I was sitting there and all of a sudden just I could feel the tears just coming through like these part, the glasses down here. And I looked over and I saw my sister also wiping my tear. Both of us we're just in in emotional pain at the at the ending of this movie it's something that it will impact you and it's something that you will remember for a very long time i'm going to remember this movie for a very long time that's why i'm saying that it's one of pixar's new best because there's just so much here when it comes to just the visual animation but also the characters the story the overall theme of the film so much here is just so clever unique something that we haven't even really seen that much of lately. This is something that feels new. Like, it's using familiar story elements, but it was used to craft this new feeling story, this new emotional and funny at times roller coaster of a film. And this movie is funny, don't get me wrong, we have another side character in the form of a dog named Dante who is really funny. They do a lot of physical comedy with the dog, which actually really worked for me. And also Ernesto de la Cruz, he is a pretty charming guy. Benjamin Bratt does a pretty good job playing him as well as singing because there is a song called Remember Me that he sings and it's really good. I didn't know Benjamin Bratt could sing like that, but apparently he can. But throughout this year, I feel like I've been complaining a little bit too much about movies that feel like they're a little too lighthearted, but then they'll have like a, sh a shift into like a little more dramatic tone and it just feels awkward. This is like one of those rare movies where it doesn't feel awkward at all. It's a perfect blend of family comedy, nothing too raunchy, maybe a few hints at some dirty stuff, but nothing too like straightforward out there. So you have that perfect blend of family comedy, anyone can go see this movie, but also this deeper emotional story and theme that will just gut punch you. And this is another Pixar movie where kids can see it very young and they can enjoy it, but as they grow older they can appreciate it much more and they can finally understand why their parents and older brother and sister were crying at it in the movie theater. And unlike another Pixar film that came out earlier this year, Cars 3, the world actually makes sense. When they go to the land of the dead, they have certain rules, certain ways that they live their life that all make sense. It's nothing that feels forced. It's nothing that feels like totally unbelievable or they're contradicting themselves. No, it all fits. It works very well. The world doesn't take you out of the movie like a Cars would. And as I mentioned, remember me earlier, this movie has some great songs here. The musical score by Michael G. Kino is of course fabulous and wonderful, another great one for him, but also the songs themselves are really good, especially Remember Me. That's a song that I want nominated for like best song of the year because you can look at the song, without spoiling too much about the movie, you can look at the song and hear it in many different ways that can impact you. That's all I can really say without spoiling too much with, about the movie. Guys, I know that there is a 21 minute frozen short to get through before you see the movie in theaters, but seriously, go check it out. Once you endure the Frozen special, you can actually get something truly amazing out of going to the theater that day. It will be worth sitting through that overlong short just to see this amazing masterpiece of a movie. For a while, I thought I knew what my favorite film of the year was going to be and thinking, there's only one other movie coming out December 15th that might top it, and now this movie just threw a whole wrench into that plan because I don't, I honestly don't know if Star Wars will be able to top it. I don't know if this is better than Logan or War for the Planet of the Apes. Just this, this movie though has been in the back of my head so much. I've been thinking about it a whole lot. I saw it Saturday. I thought about it Sunday. I thought about it for the majority of school. And after this video, while I'm editing, I think I'm going to be thinking about this movie even more. Kids will be able to love this movie because of the bright animation, the great character design for the skeletons, and also just the fun comedy with the characters, but also the adults. This is not one of those animated films that has come out this year where you'll be rolling your eyes or thinking like, all right, let's get this over with. This is a movie that I think adults will also love. In fact, you'll probably wish that the movie never ends. You'll probably want to keep living in this world. That's what I wanted to do. I just kind of wanted to stay here with these characters that I've grown to love in only about an hour and 40 minutes. And this isn't 
me asking for a sequel, by the way. This is just me really relishing in the fact that they have crafted a beautiful movie here that really does not need to be sequelized, does not need to be made a franchise out of. This movie can just stand on its own, be its own special thing, because that's what it is. Guys, see Coco. It is a masterpiece, one of the best of this year. It's got some of the best animation I've seen in quite a while with animated films. It's got some of the best characters, some of the best clever comedy of the year, a great world to be invested with, and an ending that will literally gut punch you. If you don't cry, if you don't cry at the ending of this movie, you are probably heartless. And I'm not saying that as like a mean thing, but you probably definitely are heartless if you did not like at least get a little teary eye at the end of this movie. I can't see how you couldn't be. I can't see how anyone couldn't though. I'm gonna give Coco an A plus. Check this movie out right away. I went in thinking like eh, it's just gonna be like an okay Pixar movie. It's much more than that. Trust me on that. This movie is spectacular. Go see it right away. But if you've seen Coco, leave in the comments below what you thought of it. And as always, thank you guys for watching. Make sure to subscribe. I'm Jackson Fulcher. See you guys next time.